first panelist, Mr. Ari Koli. And uh, Ari will introduce his, uh, the company he's representing, Nitor. But I want to say that they have taken many interesting steps on the sustainability path as a company. Ari is a CMC. Ari is a past member of, of the board of the Finnish IMC, IMC Finland. And he was also responsible for the CMC program in our institute. Ari is now working as a sustainability engineer at NITOR, which is an, a di digital engineering company. So we have IT representative as, as the first. He has more than 25 years of experience leading digital service creation with a proven track record over a per period of 15 years using agile methodologies. He is a business oriented enterprise agile coach with a passion for creating sustainable digital value propositions and the customer experience with design thinking. And at the moment, he focuses on creating a sustainable digital future in the company Nitor. Over the year, his career has taken him from Sonera to Nokia and from there to Nitor. And as said, Ari, please, the floor is yours. Uh, you can tell more about you and, and the company and what you have been doing. Thank you, Kim, for your kind words. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now sharing that so yes so i come from a company called nitor and i'm going to walk through some of the aspects we have done in the organizational level as well as i have done in personal level uh, pretty much thanks kim for going through so actually i'm having two roles at the moment i'm working as a sustainable engineer in our company who's actually developing the sustainability aspects of our company but at the same time i'm still working as a consultant uh, with my customers so also also taking in pragmatic steps with my customer on some of these these aspects but yeah it, it's it's great that actually nitor has assigned this kind of role in a company really kind of helping us to deliver further uh, pretty much everything starts with the strategy so NITOR has been renewing our strategy and our mission, mission and vision. And uh, we, our, our uh, kind of mission statement is to make digital development sustainable. It's still a bit unclear what it's all going to be, but I think in future we will find out what it's all about. But we actually, in NITOR, we actually want to develop high quality digital products so that they have some impact on our customers and, and, and the society around us. Uh, and, and pretty much that's what we call digital development. We have actually thought about this digital development as part of this, this uh, triple bottom line uh, of, of the social, the environmental and economics uh, framework. As, as we are digital engineers, so we thought that digital is part of this from our point of view. And hopefully, the work we do, uh, the progress we make actually promotes the progress towards more sustainable world. Uh, Nitor, we are quite small company. We are SME company. We have roughly over 200 employees. And, uh, and, and pretty much our, our kind of mission, sorry, uh, vision is that uh, Nitor wants to be the top choice in our field and that it would be empowered by the happiness of our people and our customers. So we want to fo foster the culture of sustainability and well-being, and, and that to make us the top choice for our, for our customers, but also the professionals for looking long-term partnership. And, and pretty much we want to hope that our work will be recognized internationally and, and have some through its technology and the social impact. And, and, and pretty much those are the two cornerstones of, of NITOR, that we have well-educated, good employees that are happy because they are productive. And that's why also our customers are happy. And, and there's the kind of the two metrics also we use is that uh, we have the best customer satisfaction in IT sector in Finland through last, last uh, nine years. 
and also we've been while we st- uh, go, they took part on this great place to work competition uh, we were t- twice the number one in Finland and also in top three twice in the Europe level so really really we've been very good on that uh, pretty much we started the journey around a year ago I was at that point nominated as a sustainable engineer in Nitor and uh, and, and, and there was other person also we have both have 50% um, time to use in this work and it was very hard to kind of start it okay I, I thought that actually I knew a lot um, because I've been like compensating over four years my family's um, emissions and, and I knew some terminology but it was very hard so I thought that how actually we will get this thing uh, further Nitor has been member of the uh, United Nations Global Compact since 2016 and and that was quite clearly the kind of the framework we thought okay let's let's think about the global compact and also the UN sustainable development goals as the kind of actions um, we had a group of workshops um, during last spring where we talked about okay what would be the the um, the kind of the key or the most important SDGs for our company and 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 we had some prioritization and then we actually went through that okay in the, in the aspect of digital we think about this uh, number nine goal is most important for economic is number ten, eight and, and and so on so we pretty much actually wanted to find what would be the kind of the guiding guiding principles or guiding goals in our sustainable work those actually helped us then to kind of formulate the scope of our work because otherwise it starts to be too wide. Also, as part of that, um, we defined what would be the kind of the really the outcomes uh, of our strategic goals. So we identified three different strategic goals in our work. The first one is that uh, as a company, as an editor, we need to operate responsible and sustainable. So we need, really need to so-called uh, walk the talk. Otherwise, it's just kind of greenwashing. Okay, um, I will go through next soon uh, what the ac- uh, actions we have done on that. The second part is, of course, how we could actually create this kind of cultural change inside our company. And, and, and the, as I'm a child coach, I know that the people in the company are the culture, how they work and how they behave. So then we need to think how we could actually have and make our employees promote more sustainable lifestyle because then they start also making impact in our customers. And the third one was that, okay, as we are a small company, uh, we have quite small uh, footprint, but our kind of the net impact could be much, much bigger con- considered our size. So what would be the kind of elements or the things we could actually work with uh, with our customers to really have a sustainable digital business. And that's something where it's still in, 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 in progress. Sorry, this was this one. Um, so what we have actually done concretely is, is that um, we actually, we pretty much actually follow the UN Global Compact um, principles and the SDGs. So as said, those are our guiding, guiding kind of principles. And uh, as part of this process, we are, have to actually report annually on our progress towards those goals. And just this year, uh, there was this early, uh, early uh, adapter program. We voluntarily participated on that because next year that will be mandatory for all global compact participants. And it was a great learning journey for us. We actually got a lot of learnings through that community of progress reporting and, and already have been taking some of those as part of our, our operations. The other thing is this WWF in, in Finland has this screen office uh, program, uh, which is very pragmatic approach. As Nitor, we want to call ourselves very pragmatic people. Um, the kind of how we can actually improve the, the kind of reduction of emissions of our headquarters. Uh, we have small headquarters in, in, in the middle of Helsinki. And, and there we have a lot of this kind of uh, actions we are now working towards. And hopefully by the end of this year, we are able to pass the, their audit. Uh, 
Unfortunately, the program is only available in Finland, but it's, it's very interesting if you are located in Finland. Um, then, of course, we have done the calculations of, of our emissions, but now to really, really understand, we actually now starting the process with a, with a partner to calculate the, our emissions based on this GSG protocol, the green, greenhouse gas protocol. And of, of course, we aim to compensate our offset annually. That's the kind of the minimum level. But in addition, uh, we are planning to kind of setting a roadmap how to minimize our emissions. And the target is to kind of commit this ambitious science-based target initiative. So this 1.5 degree uh, target, and also later on this net zero target. So that really is a kind of good measurement for companies, how, how serious they are about their environmental uh, thing. But also we have other programs going on um, as I'm in my role, focusing mostly on this environmental sustainability. We have programs uh, on, on the improving the diversity and inclusivity and, and other kind of things also happening in NITOR. If you think about on the, and promoting um, then on the sustainable life cycle. So as mentioned, the sustainability is a culture and change. I've been working many years now doing the agile transformation. And I think this sustainability transformation is the next step. It's much, much wider. We just don't talk about as a sustainable pace, but much, much wider things. And, and pretty much we've been working this that how we can have the communications internally using the existing channels, uh, involving people in our bi-weekly to work together, uh, defining that kind of that co common culture together. So it needs to be have all the participants in the company in, involved in some level. Of course, you don't get always everyone, but as many as possible. But, but one important thing is that you need to have the champion in your company to drive that. In, in Nitor, that's me pretty much nowadays, to drive these things further. Thank, thank God there's also others who are very interested in this. So it's not me doing all the work there. <laughs> Um, we have this kind of core project concept, which actually we are trying to have uh, more concrete impacts in some cases. Um, we have been now introducing of the sustainability as part of our employee onboarding experience. So we go through that, okay, what is those aspects of this? Uh, because we see that nowadays, um, especially the young employees are very um, interesting on the sustainability aspect of the company, how we actually taking these things. And as mentioned, we are updating some of the internal policies and practices based on the, on the, on the kind of uh, studies we have done, but also um, the kind of internal work, what we are doing. But then the inter interesting part is also this, how NITOR can could have a positive impact on our clients and sustainable digital business. So it's about this creating this net impact with our customers. I think this is the one I have this uh, last line there, but uh, there's there's opportunity for so much more. And I think that's the case with just finding these things that what we could do. Um, so there, I think there's a huge amount of opportunities to really work on this area. So we have actually started some discussions with our customers regarding sustainability. Uh, so a couple of our customers have asked us to report our emissions and, and stuff like that. Um, and, and they really want to understand what's, what's our impact as part of their supply chain. That's something we need to report. And I think next year, this is just mandatory for everyone. Um, we are actually kind of for, forerunner of building uh, cloud services. So these are usually more sustainable than building traditional IT services. Uh, we are focusing a lot of on this kind of having the accessibility services for our customers. and and uh, especially in my role, I try to have the influence on the cultural change, the ways of working, have the sustainable base at work. A um, couple of other, I mentioned already earlier about this, you want to go about Compact and the SDGs, but of course the ESG as whole provides this holistic view on sustainability. So it's kind of extends beyond this environmental issues trying to help the stakeholders understand how the organizations manage the risks 
and opportunities related to environments, social and governance criteria. And, and there are two kind of uh, standards available, GRI and SAPS. Um, and and for, from these two, actually, uh, together with our investor, Tapanis company, <laughs> we actually went through and we have selected the SAPS as the baseline there. So we are combining um, the SDGs with, with the SAPS. And uh, here's something we create, created together. So our metrics, what we went through. Um, so for each of these pillars or areas, digital, in economic, social, environmental, as we have SDG as a guiding uh, principle, we also identified based on the SAPS framework, some of these aspects we want to really uh, take further. So try to find, and you can, for example, see some of these SAPS numbers here, they are refers to that standard. Uh, so this helped us to kind of formulate what we actually want to achieve. And, and as you can see, it's quite a um, wide range of things. We are talking about how we actually improve the innovation of a company, how to have professional integrity in our company, how we take account data security, how we actually take account accessibility, how we engage with customers and our employees, the well-being of, of our employees. Um, how we take account the diversity and inclusivity of our company, also about the personal development of, of our people. And then on the environmental side, we have the climate. And also uh, the climate side is more about this footprint, so how much emissions we create. And then the net impact is more about what positive handprint we could actually create with our customers. And uh, here are some examples. I couldn't list here everything. Uh, but some uh, examples of what we actually done. Uh, so we are updating, for example, our code of conduct to have more of this sustainable point of view. Um, we have done some uh, internal data security training programs. Uh, we have on the well-being, we have ex extremely good health program covering both physical and mental health issues, um, different kind of programs. Um, personal development, we have uh, budgeted five days of, of for the trainings and also you get this kind of notification how much you are actually done so you are always keep track on what's actually working um, so a lot of things happening as mentioned on the climate side we're starting now the calculations and end of this year we hopefully can have the roadmap ready for our emission um, reduction and and then the sustainability risks also would be part of our, our overall risk management process some of these are already kind of done. Some of these are in, in the progress. But then also, of course, um, want to raise as a management consultant point of view, as I'm, as, as, as um, Kim mentioned, I'm a CMC. So it's, it's not just that um, the sustainable business don't only create the economic value, or it shouldn't be. It's all about to consider also the other aspects. So the well-being, of several different stakeholder groups, customers, employees, environmental and society. And they're kind of the definition of the sustainable business model. And so it could actually create this competitive advantage through superior customer value and contribute to sustainable development of the company. Both the shows on in, in environmental side. And the value creation is about how the organization provides economic, environmental and social value to the organization in the context where it exists. So I really think that uh, sustainability can potentially bring competitive advantage to, to kind of the brand and image value, because I think that that's something you will see. Also, in the, if you think about the financial side, I think Tapani will talk about that more, is that there's also start to be a risk factor if you don't have these things in, in place. And also, as a company which actually is heavily uh, kind of trusting on the, on the employees what we have in the company, um, the kind of the, the social, having the, uh, the sustainability aspects well handled is a kind of the key competition factor. Shortly kind of listing some of these um, regulatory things, I will not go this through, but I think uh, from the CMC point of view, it's very important to understand what's happening on the legislation and, and the compliance side. So a lot of things happen at the EU level. 
And, and as a CMC, you really need to understand what's really happening there. But then maybe some last words about kind of how I started. So I'm a curious person. I, I want to always unlock new way, way of thinking. So, but also that it's not very easy kind of thing to start. Um, when I started, I thought, I, as mentioned, I thought I knew some stuff, but actually there was a huge ladder I need to kind of climb up. And, and, and you can really start with the small things. So what the talk, having the calculation of your own kind of emissions and, and compensating those, that's the first step you can really take. And I think that there's a lot of good resources and material. I've listed some of these here. A lot of good um, kind of webinars that are free or available, just like this one. Um, to kind of get more uh, understanding. If you go on any of those websites and start reading this, so a lot of material you get lost so easily. So usually these kind of events are extremely good that these are very facilitated and the context is, is right. Also, I can recommend that Alt University online training, which I think is very good kind of giving understanding of the sustainable business. And of course, resources of the Global Compact and the SPD are and very good. That's my part of the presentation. Thank you, Ari. Uh, and um, now you have an opportunity to put some questions on the chat if you if you had some. And um, my first question, uh, while the others are thinking of, is that uh, you mentioned a couple of times walk the talk uh, when you when you talk with with your clients do you talk about your sustainability programs uh, and uh, do, do they uh, are they curious about what you have done what you are doing in that actually yes they are so as mentioned we are discussed with two and, and and even more are in a pipeline so i've already like calendar <laughs> filling up with, with many of, of our clients that, okay, they want to understand how we have been approaching. And I'm also part of this Global Compact Finland community where we, a lot of things we do is sharing this information to each other. So um, I think this is a kind of great community, this sustainability community where we share stuff. But yes, our clients are very interested in how we actually are approaching this. I think for two reasons, they want to first of all learn <laughs> how we actually done this. And also the second thing is that, okay, they want to kind of understand what's our impact for them. Of course, we are quite small, small uh, company and our impact is quite small, but still everything counts. I can't see questions on the chat. So then I use the opportunity to place the an other question to you. Uh, which I think is also very interesting. Uh, it's talked a lot of the drivers of the sustainability to different companies and, and uh, IT or digitalization is mentioned as one. We all know that um, the companies uh, do what the legislation requires, but, but can you see that you in the IT business can be a driver that takes the companies either to the requirements of the legislation or even further than the legislation is asking for? Um, I think that the IT companies are very active on this. So, of course, there's been a lot of this digital transformation happening, but now also you need to think about how we actually build those services. What are the kind of impact they're having? Um, so yes, that's that starts to be happening. There's a mega trends of this green software uh, thing happening uh, in Finland. TAK is having this kind of program on this soft green software, and there's this global green software foundation actually promoting these ideas. So I think this is also an opportunity for the IT companies how we could maybe um, measure and have an impact, not only kind of how much emissions, but also if we could measure the net impact of, of stuff. But I think this that's still quite early phase. So we're only measuring like what's the kind of financial impact of, of the digitalization and not really on the other aspects. At least that's my observation. I'm not sure they might be. <laughs> Good. Uh, I don't know if you have a possibility to see the chat as well, but uh, yeah. there is a, 
a question would you care to elaborate uh, who are your clients the geography yeah. or, or the sector yes. so they are active in litor, litor has clients in finland and sweden we operate in helsinki area and, and other a couple other cities in, in finland and also stockholm and usually our companies are the top tier finnish companies so the most biggest companies on the financial sector uh, um, entertainment sector um what else um this kind of um, groceries and stuff like that so pretty much all the major companies in finland uh, transportation companies telecom companies um they are trusting me top services so in finland and sweden uh, mostly in sweden stockholm area 